أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are starting our closing session and we are calling up our upon our the national leaders of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations, we have a message for you. And I would like to ask Brother Osama Abu Sheikh from AMP, Sister Rula Alouj from CARE, and also the chair of USCMO, and Brother Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan from ICNA, and Brother Ayman Hamous from Mass, and Brother Khalil Meek from MLFA, and Brother Naqib Al Rahman from Muna, and our Imam Siraj Wahaj from Mana. Brothers and sisters, over the course of six years, going into the seventh year as the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations, started in 2010 as an idea, 2013 as a legal entity registered in Washington, D.C., we have been coming to this convention to share with you the vision, the unity, the collective work of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations. As, as I mentioned in the past, we started at eight founding members, and now we are over 33 organizations constituting the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations. This council, brothers and sisters, came about the growth, the importance, the necessity, the demand, and the future of the Muslim community. What you have made over the years as a vibrant, energetic, resilient community, we had to have a body that unites us, that can leverage the collective effort and wisdom and the power that we have, which is you, the people, to the benefit of the Muslim American community and to the benefit of America. This council, brothers and sisters, is a must for us. Because as they say, there is a strength in number and there is power in unity. And this is our strength and this is our power that is coming from you and that is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This council, brothers and sisters, have a vision for the community because we are growing and this growth has to be organized, has to be with a vision, has to be with objectives. And this council, brothers and sisters, at the same time responds to the needs of the community. We are affected but whatever happens overseas and overseas is affected by whatever our foreign policy is made in this country and therefore we have an obligation to respond to those challenges anytime they come from the east or from the west and we have this awesome responsibility yet the difficult time to deal with we have responded in diplomatic initiatives for Syria and we negotiated with the United Nations 
about the Ghuta when it was under siege to provide food and medical equipment to the people who've been under siege in Ghuta. We have another diplomatic initiative with the United Nations, with the U.S. State Department, with the U.S. mission to the United Nations, with the European Union, demanding that the issue of Myanmar, the Rohingya Muslims in the Arakan state, that they have to have a rehabilitation into Myanmar again. And we have been pushing for every possible way to protect the dignity of the Rohingya people. We have been negotiating and pushing for the issue of Kashmir, again with the State Department, again with the United Nations, with the European Union, with many embassies, that the issue of Kashmir is a volatile issue between two countries who have nuclear powers. If we do not respond to them, it could be a catastrophe in that region. And today we will respond to the Indian Muslims in India. The law that was passed by this racist government is unacceptable and we will fight it. We will fight it with rigorous that Muslims in India are no different than Muslims in America. And they have the right to be citizens in their own land. This, brothers and sisters, can only be done when you support us, when you are with us, when you know that we have a council that speaks for all of us for all our issues. And I could not be more grateful, more fortunate than to have a people and leaders like the fine leaders that you see behind me who support this council and who always behind this council anytime we needed anything. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce the first ever chairwoman of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organization who also happened to represent CARE, Sister Rula Alush. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, my brothers and sisters? Are we having a good time? Many congratulations to Masikna for this wonderful conference. Alhamdulillah, it's an honor for CARE to serve as the first chair of the USCMO. As we move ahead, we look forward to the USCMO growing in its membership and expanding its reach to even better reflect the beautiful diversity of the American Muslim community and to empower the voices that we have within. Alhamdulillah, at CARE in 2019, we had a very successful year. We turned 25 years old, which is an important milestone not just for CARE, but for the American Muslim community to have its largest civil rights and advocacy group turn 25. We also sued the federal government this year, and we won when a federal judge declared the United States watch list unconstitutional. As we look ahead to 2020, we're rolling out a political plan of action, and I encourage you to visit care.com to sign up so you have the information. Brothers and sisters at CARE, we're proud to work with our sister organizations through this important umbrella group that unifies us to support one another's work and to collaborate on national initiatives like the National Muslim Advocacy Day at the United States Capitol. Our unity is key because we know that we are stronger when we are together and we are more effective when we unite. As we as a community look ahead to the next presidential election year in 2020, we have to be unified in our resolve to do everything we can to reflect the political power of our community. We must do what we can to strengthen the community's presence in the political atmosphere, both locally and nationally, doing everything we can, whether it's registering people to vote, knocking on doors, making calls, holding fundraisers, running for office, and winning. And mashallah, in a room this large, I imagine we have a number of future politicians here with us today. So brothers and sisters, are we ready to do everything we can to get out the Muslim vote in 2020? 
I think we need a little more energy. Are we ready to do everything we can to get out the vote in 2020? All right, let's do this then. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Sister Rella. The cause of Palestine and the voice of Palestinian could not be more louder, more amplified, without the great work of AMP and the hard dedication of its executive director, Brother Osama Abershaid. Please come to the podium. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of the American Muslims for Palestine, I would like to reaffirm our commitment to the success of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations. AMP is a proud co-founder of this organization. Now, have, having said that, I have asked the Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman, if spices is halal. And he told me it's halal. And because spices is halal, I'm going to ask the permission of our Secretary General to address my fellow, fellow leadership of this organization. Our community expects more from us. Our community expects us to deliver on the promises that we have been making for the past seven years. Many of you, many members of this community, average and leaders in this community, have approached me, and I'm sure every one of us have heard the same, asking me and asking every one of us about this work and about this organization and about the promises that we have made. I would remind everyone, this leadership, that the pledge that we make with Allah before our community is a binding pledge. Everyone is responsible to deliver on the promises that we made. We cannot fail and we cannot fail our community. Our community entrusted us and we need to deliver. Let me tell you one more thing. You know now we have a president, a corrupt president. This is not a, this is my own message. This is not from AMP, it does not represent the USCMO. We have a corrupt president who have just been impeached. Now, the Republican Party is bragging about a political trial. They say this is not a judicial trial. We're not going to convict, convict this corrupt president. Well, that's the president, that's the U.S. Constitution, but we have a different constitution for this leadership. Once we are impeached, we are immediately removed if we don't deliver. So we have to deliver, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, for the good of our community, for the betterment of our nation, inshallah. Now, the last thought that I want to share with you. You know, Brother Osama Jamal introduced me as the executive director of the American Muslims for Palestine. Meaning, I'm a Palestinian. And as Palestinians, if they don't take what they want willingly, they will take it forcefully. We promise you this. We're going to liberate our land and we're going to liberate our people, whether they like it or they don't like it. Well, they have picked the wrong enemy. And because they have picked the wrong enemy, I want to address every one of you. And I want to plea with every one of you. I have asked permission for this. We have our Palestine Advocacy Day, the sixth annual Palestine Advocacy Day, coming in next March, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. This year, we brought 530 delegates from 32 states to advocate for Palestine. Our goal for next year is 1,000 delegates to come to Washington, D.C. between March 22nd and March 24th to wreak havoc at Capitol Hill and to send a powerful message that this president who thinks that he can give away our land has no right and will never be successful. Him and his complacent Netanyahu would never be able to defeat the will of the Palestinian people. But they need to hear it from us. We need to deliver this message to them. So I am asking every one of you, before you leave, before you exit, go to your, to go to our booth. It's right on your hand, on, on right hand side. Before you leave, just go to our booth 
and register for our Palestine Advocacy Day. We're going to pay for your accommodation. We're going to take care of you in Washington, D.C. Just come with one objective, to stand for justice and to speak truth to power and to defeat the misguided policies, the oppressive policies of this administration and of the Israeli government. And wallah, Palestine will be free, whether they like it or not, because we will make sure it is going to be free. Wassalamu alaikum. Boy, aren't we hot here? Okay, next, I would like to introduce a grassroots organization that is the backbone of our community with so many services that we are grateful for their support of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organization and for being a founding member. Please help me welcome Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan from ICNA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. After all that spices, you need some ice cream to cool it down. ICNA signed with the rest of the organization to form this USCMO. And our task is not just forming another organization, but to find solutions to our problems, to problems for our brothers and sisters here in America and overseas. This year, ICNA has been very much into challenging the issue of Kashmir along with some of our members here and you would have seen billboards across the United States of America free Kashmir free our Muslim brothers and sisters in India this year ICNA has embarked on a big project and listen carefully, dear brothers and sisters. This is not a simple project. There are about 130 million homes in the United States of America. And this year, ICNA has embarked on a national dawah campaign that in the next 10 years, inshallah, every house in America will hear about Islam from our side. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. We need your support. We need your help. The task has begun. And let me tell you, dear brothers and sisters, ICNA has gone, this Dawah campaign has gone into rural areas. And people say this is the first time that we have met a Muslim and guess what they are coming to Islam one after the other our goal is not to proselytize our goal is to let them know about Islam and Allah opens their hearts and inshallah with your help and support and with all of our brothers here we will reach 128 million homes in the next 10 years. Say Allahu Akbar. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Abdurrahman. I believe almost 2,000 mosques not even to count how many conventions and conferences and fundraising have been touched, have been blessed, have been built, and the money was raised, and the youth were inspired, the community were educated, without the presence, the power of our Imam, Siraj Wahaj from Mana, who is the one that is 
the senior leader of our community in our council, please help me. <laughs> Applaud, welcome, and thank Imam Siraj Wahaj. Assalamu alaikum. The question is what will be the future of America? Answer, what do you want it to be? And what are you prepared to do to bring it about? I've always believed that the strength of America, the Muslims in America, would come when the indigenous Muslims would marry the immigrant Muslims and merge as one Ummat and Wahida. It will happen. This is our humble effort. And sometimes we talk publicly and sometimes we talk privately, quietly and proficiently. May Allah bless this effort, bless all of these leaders, and bless you to push us so that we may serve you and serve all of humanity. Assalamu alaikum. I am very proud and I hope nobody consider me biased but it is the truth and we cannot hide from the truth I am a proud member of mass could not give me more pride to introduce the organization that has organized this convention that has been the backbone of this community in almost every project around the country. Please help me welcome our new executive director, our brother Ayman Hamous from Mass. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. وَحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ My dear brothers and sisters, I am not going to talk to you about Mass tonight. Do you guys know Mass? جزاكم الله خيرا. Let me share with you some of my inner feelings. I am overwhelmed. Overwhelmed thinking of the 23% of our American Muslim youth who no longer identify themselves with, with Islam. I'm overwhelmed with the injustice that happens in Palestine and Burma and everywhere across the, the world. I'm overwhelmed with the 62,000 American who live in New York City without homes and ask myself what is it that I am doing what is it that we are doing to take care of that and sometimes I'm afraid as well the same way Musa alayhi salam stood up in front of Allah when he was given the first command to go deliver the message he said we are afraid that he may transgress. We are afraid that we may be targeted as a community or socially profiled. It's a human element that we should not try to deny. But our challenge and our struggle is to stand up for justice. Stand firmly for justice. This is the essence of our deed as a community. And as I am overwhelmed, I acknowledge that we are not there yet as a community. I drive a lot. I drive from New York to DC almost once a month. And my little son asked me, Dad, are we there? And my answer is not yet. But as I drive, I see signs. And those signs tell me that we are heading in the right direction. 
And one of those signs is this event that was attended by 2,100 people. In 2008, it is attended by 25,000 people after 10 years. One of those signs is our young sisters who are sitting right here in front of me, Abrar Umaysh, who just got 160,000 votes a few weeks ago. This is a sign that we are heading in the right direction as a community. I tell my brothers and sisters in Mass, listen, Mass should not be our focus. We belong to a cause, a community that is bigger than Mass, and bigger than care, and bigger than ikna, and bigger than every individual organization. We belong to a cause that is a trust given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we fear, I remember that moment when Musa alayhi salam had no way to go having the sea in front of him and the Pharaoh behind him and everybody was saying, Inna la mudrakun. We are indeed our coat. He said, Kalla, Inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdeen. Allah is with me and will guide me. Allah is with us and will guide us and this community will prevail and our cause will prevail. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. There were many hot cases pertaining to American Muslims nobody could touch because they challenged our own government and a very highly classified cases. But there was an organization that stood up for this community and for every member of this community. And most important of all, they are a founder of this council. Please help me welcome Brother Khalil Meek from MLFA. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah wa ala alayhi wa sabi wa salam. Good evening, everyone. It's an honor for me to be here to let you know on behalf of the Muslim Legal Fund of America, we are honored to support and be a founding member of the U.S. Council of Muslim Organizations. And it's our honor as an organization, as a legal fund, to represent this community and to defend all of the people in this audience, our imams, our leaders, our activists, our organizations, our national organizations, our local organizations. It's an honor for us to say that we are committed, our efforts and our energy, to protecting your voice, your institutions, our institutions and our voice. Moving into the 2020 political environment, I would say a storm is coming. The polarization between the rhetoric and the actions that we're seeing on both sides of the aisle are going to cause emotions to run higher, people to be more exaggerated in their behavior, and we are seeing what happens all over the world around us on, and the injustice outside of our borders is coming every day closer to our own society. And if we don't take every issue, every injustice that we can do something about every single day in this country, we will not have an opportunity to make a difference tomorrow. So my message to us is unity today will be our strength tomorrow and we all should hold fast to the firm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be honored. Bismillah. To participate in the defending each other moving forward. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.
Last but not least, another backbone of our community, another grassroots, another important sector that bring the diversity of our community. Please help me welcome Brother Naqib Rahman from the Muslim Ummah of North America. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. On behalf of Muslim Ummah of North America, I would like to extend my sincere congratulations to the organizers, volunteers, and the participants of this convention. Alhamdulillah, this is indeed a great convention of Muslims in the United States. Five years ago, we formed USCMO with eight founding members. We all look different. We work in different ways. We are not competing with each other. We complete each other and we support each other. USCMO brought us together. But what brings us together is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have only one mission. That is, we are in a mission to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are focused, it doesn't matter what bigotry and xenophobia comes our way. We can still be proud, confident, unapologetic Muslim. We don't need to seek approval from anyone. We don't need to fit in. We don't need to do anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Together, we can achieve anything. 2020 is going to be an interesting year for Muslims in the United States. Inshallah, we will weather the storm together. Barakallah feekum. Looking forward to a bright future. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Brothers and sisters, this is the council founders, and we have many, many leaders who could not be with us on the stage because our time is limited. Brothers and sisters, 2020 is your voice. 2020 is your challenge. Can you promise on 2020 you will be going out in buses and thousands of people to the polling polls and you are going to vote? Are you going to vote? Are you going to vote? Are you going to make a difference? Are you going to make American Muslims proud? Are you going to make our Obama proud? Brothers and sisters, the council will be coming to you in many different projects and many conferences that will meet the challenge of tomorrow. We look forward to working with you. We look forward for your dua. We need your support. 2020, we will celebrate next year. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa If you can, we'll make dua together. We will conclude this great session with a short dua so taking advantage of the thousands we have here if one of us will be close enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everyone will be accepted so please give the coming five minutes your attention your attending heart while collectively making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يا الله يا الله يا الله You are the creator you are the bestower you are the giver you are the forgiver يا الله يا الله يا الله You gave us Islam so give us the strong iman and help us to live with ihsan يا الله يا الله يا الله You give us life So make it an obedient life يا الله You blessed us with the Quran with following Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم 
Ya Allah, you deprived us from following, from meeting him in the dunya. Ya Allah, with your bounty, with your generosity, combine us with him in the firdaus, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, you know our needs, so cover our needs from your treasures. You know our weakness, so fix our weakness with your strength, Ya Allah. You know our sins, so forgive our sins with your rahmah, Ya Allah. اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله اللهم لك الحمد هديتنا للإسلام وأكرمتنا بالقرآن وأنعمت علينا بصحبة الحبيب العدنان اللهم لك الحمد على الطاعة ولك الحمد على القربات نسألك اللهم أن تتقبل منا الطاعات وأن تغفر لنا الذلات وأن تستر لنا العورات وأن ترحم لنا يا رب العالمين ما قدمنا وما أخرنا اللهم بفضلك وجودك وكرمك تعلم ضعفنا ولا يخفى عنك شيء من أمرنا نسألك اللهم لكل طاعة قبولة ولكل ذنب مغفرة ولكل عيب سترا ولكل ضيق مخرجا ولكل هم فرجا ولكل حزن فرحا ولكل معصية مغفرة اللهم برحمتك الواسعة عمنا واكفنا جميعا شر ما أهمنا وغمنا واجمعنا جميعا في صحبة نبينا إخوانا متحابين على سرر متقاب في جنات النعيم تحت ظل عرشك يا كريم اللهم تقربنا إليك بدعائك تقربنا إليك باتباع نبيك تقربنا إليك بقراءة قرآنك تقربنا إليك بدعوتك اللهم تقبل منا ذلك اللهم وإن قبلت منا ذلك فاجعله بركة علينا في صحتنا وبركة علينا في أولادنا وبركة علينا في أرزاقنا اللهم رب لنا أولادنا واقض لنا حاجاتنا وفرج لنا كرباتنا وارفع لنا درجاتنا وحبب إلينا قربنا منك يا ربنا اللهم إنا نسألك يوم القيامة ونسألك عند الجزاء فوزا ونسألك عند الحساب يسرا اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل منا ولا بيننا شقيا ولا محروما فرج لنا كرب المكروبين واستر لنا عيب المعيبين وفرج كرب المكروبين وفك أسرا المأسورين اللهم وارفع الظلم عن المظلومين ورد يا ربنا غيبة الغائبين وفك أسر المأسورين نسألك يا كريم يا كريم يا كريم أن ترزقنا لذة النظر إلى وجهك الكريم ومرافقة نبيك في جنات الفردوس الأعلى أجمعين وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم